how you engage with the college admissions process at every step of the journey is just as important as whether or not you engage at all. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process at my website, collegemeister.com. I want to really focus in today on the word aloof. You may not know what aloof means in the English language. It's not a word that's thrown around too much these days. But basically, the word aloof means removed or distant. Uh, and that's a key word that you do not want to be able to be described as at any point throughout the college admissions process. It's not just necessarily removed or distant physically. It's also removed or distant emotionally. And what I have seen increasingly over the past several years is more and more students are uh, variously aloof or disengaged or detached from key elements of the college admissions process. And this aloofness really comes back to bite them uh, in the end. So what do I mean? Well, the most obvious place in which aloofness is quite startling to the counterparty would be in an interview. So let's say you have been offered an interview uh, after you've applied to the college that you're applying to, and either it's a virtual interview or an in-person interview, and you don't make eye contact, or you make eye contact occasionally, but you're looking down quite a bit, or sometimes you're actually talking right to them, but you're sort of looking consistently over in a different direction. This is obviously quite easy to do when you are doing a virtual interview because it's hard to look at a little dot on the screen and pretend it's a person. Uh, and that's truly the eye contact way in which you would engage with a virtual interview. You don't look at the person's picture the whole time because that's not where the camera's picking it up. But I increasingly hear of it and see of it and see it with, with teenagers talking to adults in real life forums. They are not able to make eye contact consistently and even when they do make eye contact consistently, uh, it's often the case that the student is not conveying body language that would indicate that the student is really present. Uh, and this is disturbing. I mean, there's a lot of social and other reasons why this could be happening to today's teens. I am not a psychologist. I am not a professional in mental health or uh, social dynamics that cause students or humans or populations to change. But what I will say is that since I started doing this almost 20 years ago, the teenager uh, of today is quite a different animal than the teenager of 20 years ago in terms of being able to carry on a conversation orally and in person or virtually. Uh, the conversations are quite more stable stultifying, stilted, they're very uh, less smooth than they were the years in the past that I've done this. So when you are engaging in an interview, it's extremely important, uh, and this obviously could go for anyone, but particularly for teenagers applying to college, it's extremely important that you make the person you're talking to feel like this is a conversation, it's a two-way street, you're engaged by the conversation, you're interested in actually being there. I mean, that's a really key term or, or phrase. You don't want to make the person you're engaging with in an interview feel like you don't want to be there. But increasingly, I think students this age group don't know how to convey naturally their desire to be in a conversation and what type of body language, intonation, you know, the way in which you even sit on a chair would indicate that you actually want to be there versus are aloof. So it's extremely important that you are the opposite of aloof in an interview. But it's also extremely important, well before you get, God willing, to the interview, it's very important that you engage vigorously with the college admissions process at every step of the process. This includes engaging in research into colleges that are the right fit for you. But being aloof would be, oh, my friend's applying here. My mom wants me to apply there. Oh, I'm going on Reddit, so I'm going to see what people say are the T20. And therefore, uh, I'll just apply to a handful of those because I'm pretty smart. Uh, and then getting going down rabbit holes where you're so worried about rank and other things. 
that you don't really engage in the research process in a manner that puts you at the center of the process and then reflects back on your ability to ask questions of yourself and say, would I like this? Would I be happy there? Is this a place I could see myself living for four years with other people at this campus? These are sometimes questions that no longer even cross the mind of students because they're so caught up in the rat race of getting into a particular college, how they appear to other people. Remember, this is a generation of students who are very cognizant of their um, their public perception on profile pages on places like TikTok or other social media, but they're not so concerned about their actual way in which they relay communication to other people in the real world. They're very good at curating potentially uh, their public profiles, but they may not be as strong as curating or putting themselves together actually in the real world when it comes time to engage in the real process of determining where do you, I want to live over the next four years? What do I want to study over the next four years? Who do I want to be surrounded with over the next four years? They're so concerned about public perceptions about the virtual version of themselves that they're not actually as concerned about how they engage with or perceived by those they engage with in reality. So this is a very interesting uh, juxtaposition. And again, I see it increasingly, but it's very important that you really ask yourself, who am I? How do I want to be perceived in reality, not just in my curated public profiles? Uh, and what will make me happy? And wh where can I learn more? And so that gets right back to the interview. An interview is not just an opportunity for you to perform like a circus animal for someone. It's also an opportunity for you to learn from that person, engage with that person, and frankly, in the back of your mind, or maybe even in the front of your mind, be judgmental or critical of who are you learning from? Do you like this person? Do you feel like they they are someone that you would like to be in 20, 30 years when you're interviewing for that partic particular college? Obviously, this is just one person, but you're allowed to be critical too. You're allowed to be thoughtful and ask yourself questions too. And so this is all about not being aloof. Being aloof is sort of just like a leaf in the wind. You're sort of disengaged. You're, you're where, wherever the wind blows you, you'll go. Uh, that's very concerning for someone to see someone who's aloof. It's disturbing to engage with someone who is aloof. So again, the, the admissions officers reading your essay, if it's written in an aloof manner, it, it comes across wrong. If your resume seems not to have been put together in a meticulous manner, in a, in a very thoughtful, methodical, careful manner, it will in many cases read as though it was put together in an aloof manner, sort of like, oh, you just sort of pulled something together at the last minute. You're sort of disengaged from this. You're not so into caring about the words you choose for your extracurricular resume. This goes for essays. This goes for even emails with college admissions officers. This goes for when the college admissions officers visit your high school and you don't show up to their presentation. That's the very definition of aloof. Uh, or you go to the presentation, you come late, maybe you leave early. And even if you do come on time and leave on time when everyone else leaves, maybe you just sit in the back and maybe you're even scrolling on your phone at the same time. That would be you being aloof. So what I'm encouraging you to do in that particular scenario is get to the front of the room or make sure that you, there's no space really between you and the admissions officer's table. Get close to that person or get in the front row or if it's a circle table or as they call it in some private schools, a Harkness table, you know, make sure you have a good view of the admissions officer as he or she gives their 20 to 40 minute presentation when they visit your high school. Uh, and shake hands with the admissions officer at the end. Maybe even ask a question of the admissions officer once he or she is done uh, uh, you know, sharing information about his or her campus or university or college. That would be the opposite of aloof. That would be you engaging meaningfully, vigorously, thoughtfully. Stand up straight. I always joke with students, make sure that when you're sitting during an interview or a conversation with an admissions officer that you're in a state of cat-like readiness, You know that your back is straight, that you're on the edge of your seat, that you're not slouched all the way back here. You know, these are very basic things for older people to know because they have been engaging in the real world 24-7 for most of their life. But for students who have grown up in a time of being on their iPad 
in their bed completing their homework and during virtual school for a year or two uh, and whose sport is esports, and uh, for students who socialize primarily not by talking or in person with their peers, but maybe by texting in uh, dark corners in their home on their sofa with their peers, it's very different for these types of students to not project aloofness. It's very difficult for these students not to project aloofness because they've never actually had to on a consistent basis, in most cases, again, this is obviously not all cases, but by by leaps and bounds, there is far there are far fewer opportunities for students who are currently 16 to 18 throughout the course of their life so far to have engaged in real life interactions that would project the opposite of aloofness. And therefore, the vast majority of their time can be, you know, they could be very engaged in their mind. Their mind could be spinning at 125 miles per hour, the wheels in their mind. But they have not had to concurrently hold their body or their eyes or their facial expressions in a manner that would convey the thoughts, the minds, the, the energy of what's going, the, the, what's going on in that student's mind. So this is really important. You do not want to project physically or through words any sort of aloofness throughout the college admissions process. Uh, this goes for times in which you're researching privately. It goes for times when you're writing your essay, you think privately in your room at 10 o'clock at night. But again, ultimately, someone's going to see this and they're going to see the output of this. And so make sure that you actually hold your body in a manner where you were completing your essay, where you're actually engaged and you're not doing four things at once. You're not TikToking or whatever it is you're doing on one hand or texting with friends and also listening to your favorite music on your computer and completing your essay. That's going to inadvertently, you may not realize it, but inadvertently cause your essay not to be as well focused and written. Similarly, like I said, if a college admissions officer visits your school, if you visit a college campus, let's say you're on an Ivy League campus, don't be on your cell phone the whole time. Look at where you are. Engage in the community you find yourself for those few hours Listen as other students ask questions. Your questions aren't the only ones that matter. Listen as people who look like you or look very different from you ask questions because you may learn something from that. Whereas many students these days, they go on college tours and they're more worried about how they look or maybe they're on their phone or they just want to get to the next meal or they're in a fight with their parents that day and they're so engaged in that that they're aloof to or uh, separated or disengaged or detached from what they're really there to do, which is learn about the college, look at all the students on campus, learn, look about, look at the actual physical plant of the campus, uh, get a sense of if this is a place they would feel comfortable for, for four years, try to meet with a professor, try to sit in on a class, really engage with, ask questions to the admissions officers or tour guides that you will be interacting with that day. That's how you behave in a way that is the opposite of aloof. So wake up. Uh, again, this is stated in a non-political way. I know that the word woke has obviously political connotations, so I'm not going to say you have to become woke. That's not what I'm saying. Do not interpret it that way one way or the other. What I'm saying is simply wake up, engage, open your eyes, perk up your ears and your eyes as you engage in this process by being more engaged. Actually, I would argue you must be 100% engaged throughout the entire process. You're going to get better results. You're going to get better outcomes in terms of acceptance letters. You're going to have selected the right schools more likely if you've been engaged deeply and meaningfully and vigorously throughout this process. But if you approach this process at any one of these touch points in an aloof manner, I would almost call it a sleepy manner, uh, a distracted, attentional manner, manner, you will get much less out of this process than you could or should. So please wake up. Please do not be aloof because you are going to have a much happier outcome at the end if you remain engaged, keep that eye contact, uh, both literally and metaphorically throughout the process as you reflect on what's meaningful to you, as you gather information about what you need, uh, regarding what you need in order to make the right choice for you, not your best friend, not your significant other, not your mom, not your dad, not your brother, not your sister, but you. Uh, and, and really continue to engage thoughtfully, meaningly. It's called the college admissions process because it does not happen in one day. There are multiple very important steps during this journey. 
And if you can remain engaged and the opposite of aloof throughout every part of this process, you're going to thank me later. Again, my name is Craig Meister. You can go to my website, collegemeister.com, to learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout every step of the college admissions process. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.